I have this theory, Doug, and I want yes. you to hear my theory out. You can steal this for your fine radio show someday, okay? <laughs> so my theory is <laughs> anything that happened after 1990 in sports uh -huh. is to make people rich. You're doing it for owners, like expansion. We didn't need the Charlotte Hornets, but owners wanted the expansion fee. Okay. Or you're doing it either for TV partners or you're doing it for rich guys to get richer. But we had all the rules we needed overwhelmingly in sports. We had all the teams. Now, there have been tweaks to football, and I'm for, okay, for late hitting. But prime example is suddenly now the NBA is like, our playoff format is terrible. We're going to do a 1 through 16. And I'm like, you know why you're doing that? You're doing that because ESPN and TNT don't want to be saddled with the Eastern Conference if LeBron goes and plays for the Lakers. I don't buy that the NBA is suddenly the playoffs are going to be way better because I'm going to – it's like interleague baseball, Doug. In the end, Twins Marlins isn't any more interesting than the other crappy National League and American League matchups. I don't buy this new playoff seating changes anything. Well, look, I, I think that you, – you, you mentioned interleague. Um, the less is more approach never works with people in business, right? They always, they, they're like, uh, more is more. Like, right. no, 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 less is more. Right. I mean, I, I'm not sure how many people are aware there's now 15 in each league, American and National League. Right. So there's literally, not figuratively, literally an interleague series during every series at every week in Major League Baseball. So it's no longer special. It used to be special. It was great when they had interleague baseball. Sure. The difference now is not only is there always interleague, but you can watch all of these teams play all the time. Right. It used to be you couldn't see, you physically could not see anybody. It was one baseball game on a week, and you'd have Mel Allen and baseball. Think about, and this. Valentine. Think about right. this. The Boston Red Sox beat writer, who had a Hall of Fame vote, didn't see half the National League teams play, or more. Not half. All not, not even the on National television. All, right? That's <laughs> why the All-Star game, by the way, used to be cool. Now yeah. it's like, all right, we've seen all these guys. We've yeah. actually seen them compete against each other. Um, and it's that that... The law of unintended consequences, which I think has has hurt Major League Baseball. They thought, hey, interleague play is great, more interleague play, not less interleague play. And while a 16-team playoff may be great because it could actually give us the two best NBA teams or the four best NBA teams, regardless of conference competing against each other, look at baseball, right? When they had uh, the Mets against the Yankees, the ratings plummeted because it became a regional sport. You mentioned this with college football. Look at the ratings for college football. It's become a southeastern sport. Great. The ratings in Birmingham are awesome. Okay, but Birmingham ratings are are not indicative of of great ratings nationally. And so I, I think you run the risk of, I mean, if you have Rockets and Warriors, it sounds like a good idea. Well, what if you have Rockets Spurs? Correct. It's an all Texas final. It, it would be a ratings disaster. disaster. A ratings disaster. Additionally, there's a, a reason you have the Eastern Conference and Western Conference. You can play them on the same night to which you have one feed into the other. You know, 66% of the television viewers in the country that watch sports are in the Eastern time zone. And uh, so does that mean you're going to start West Coast finals games or West Coast semifinal games at, at 4 o'clock to appease the East Coast viewers who aren't going to be watching anyway? So there's, there's a lot else at work. Yeah. Additionally, and here's the last thing that's the most important part. You don't play even schedules. You don't play even schedules. So how are you going to say who the best teams are when they're not competing against e e exact even variety of opponents? You know, D Goulet brought up something in our morning meeting this morning, which I, I, I hadn't thought about but was real smart. He said... The other thing about this one through 16 seating that, that, that like Bill Simmons has been on it for years and it's like it's it's ultimately a great website story. Yeah, it, it's idealistic that the Warriors are the number one seed and the se no, it's not the way it works because so many really high end teams don't care about their seating. You could get the Warriors and Cavs meet. In the first round, because the Warriors by next year are a four seed because they mail it in, and the Cavs with LeBron. So the idea that the number one seed's your best team, the Raptors now are the number one seed in the East, and nobody thinks they're a number one seed in the East. The Cavs weren't the number one seed last year in the East. The Boston Celtics were, right? And LeBron James has been to seven straight NBA Finals. Only twice has he been the number one seed. So, like, what, what you're saying is accurate, and people... They, they understand that right now the West is dominant. And there yes. was a time when the East was the dominant yes. conference. You go 80s, back. Not, yeah, right. early 90s. So, so let's just see how it plays out. I do, what I do like about Adam Silver is he understands that there are issues, that there is an imbalance in terms of the talent in the league. The West is more talented than the East is right now, and he's trying to address it. Sure. So at least 
offering up the, I know we've, like the worst answer anybody ever gives you, why do you do that? Well, that's because that's how we've always done it. Well, that's not really a smart answer. So at least he's giving a smart answer, a thoughtful answer. The problem is in how you actually would implement it and the unintended consequence of implementing it. By the way, our Sam's our director. Show this again to our television audience. The idea that if you do 1 through 16 seating, the games will be so much better. Would you really be fascinated to watch the Wizards, Pacers, Celtics, Blazers, Cleveland, Denver, Minnesota, Milwaukee, Toronto, Philadelphia? No, those aren't any more captivating than what you'd have now. And and one of the one of the things it takes out in the NBA is the you know the Lakers, Celtics, and all those historic rivalries. And if the Philadelphia Sixers become what I think most of us think they could ultimately become, right? Remember, you go back to the the Sixers, Lakers, NBA for the flashbacks yes. to old East versus West and beat L.A. chance in Boston. Y you take out the East versus West and you change the sport dramatically. Maybe you change it for the better, but there's a very strong possibility you change it for the worse. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.